installment of a computers and technology. And today we're going to be making another upgrade to the server right here. As you can see, I have our web server pulled out and off at the moment. What we're going to be doing today is adding this Rosewell wireless card to the system. I said I was going to do this earlier in a previous video when I picked this up at a garage sale. Um, for I believe what was like three dollars something like that maybe only a dollar I think I picked this up for a dollar actually and this is going to be replacing the current wireless adapter that is on the system this tiny tiny little PandaLink uh, wireless USB dongle so that'll be a nice little upgrade it's not going to make too much of a performance difference because once again the upload speeds for my ISP are pretty crappy um, we're getting way below three megabytes per second so I mean there were people complaining in a couple other videos I should have had this up in a, uh, a wired configuration, but really it's not going to make much of a difference because of the uh, just the low network bandwidth that I have. Okay, so that's out of the way. And then the next upgrade, which is actually going to be the fun part of this video, is I'm going to add another drive into the system and put it into a raid configuration now I use air quotes around raid configuration because it's not actually going to be um, a legitimate raid setup it's going to be using the built-in windows um, disk management software mirroring uh, which is pretty much the same thing as raid one and I haven't whipped out my raid terminology in quite a while so if I say something funny in this video feel free to correct it in the comment section as always and I didn't even know you could use the Windows 7 disk management tool to create uh, what kind of resembles a RAID array uh, on Windows. I didn't know that until yesterday when I started doing some research because I was looking at the prices of legitimate RAID cards, not just the cards, the, the SATA cards that you buy and it comes with, you know, RAID software, but the actual RAID cards. Uh, and they're close to 50 to 70 bucks for just a low end one. Um, and I really don't need that kind of speed. I just need something uh, that will clone the drive so in case of, you know, one of the drives fail, uh, I can have a nice backup on hand to just plug in and get back up online and that's exactly what the Windows, the Windows mirroring function will allow us to do here. I'm really curious to see how difficult or easy it's going to be to set up mirroring using disk management. Now when I was doing the research online there was only a couple steps involved with actually setting it up. Um, so it might actually be pretty easy, but then again, that's only in theory and, you know, in my experience, when I when I get down and actually start working on this stuff, it ends up being a nightmare. So who knows, this might actually end up being a easy upgrade, but then again, it could end up being a pain in the butt. So we will see. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the network card upgrade because that should just be plug and play. Um, and of course, I have to go in and change the uh, adapter configurations back to what I had it on this... Uh, what I had them set to on this PandaLink wireless adapter, but that shouldn't take too long. Uh, and then really a big part of this video is gonna be uh, trying to set up the mirroring using this hard drive uh, and the hard drive in the system. And as you can see, this is a uh, this is actually a 2.5 inch drive. I don't have any large, uh, large capacity 3.5 inch drives. The biggest one I have laying around is 80 gigabytes and that's just not enough for this web server. Uh, this is a 20 gigabyte or three, 320 gigabyte Western Digital uh, Caviar Blue hard drive rotating at, uh, this one's rotating at 5,400 RPM. So as I said earlier, we are going to start out with the easiest upgrade, which is going to be adding in that wireless card. Now I love this system because it's just so easy to service and really this, this small little upgrade should only take a couple minutes. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, speed up the footage or not here because it's just not going to take very long. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop the card bracket holder back. I'm going to pull one of the card brackets out. We're going to be using the PCI Express X2 slot. So I want to go ahead and just pull it out here. There we go. I'm just going to pop the card in. That's kind of awkward. Oh, uh, you know what? I need the, um, ah, I realized there's a, a full-size bracket on here. Let me go ahead and swap it out with the uh, half-size bracket. All right, so that only took a minute or two, but I went ahead and swapped out that full-size bracket for the small form factor one, and it should now fit inside the system. It's kind of awkward because the, uh, <laughs> That, uh, that section of the case is in the way when trying to install a card, but uh, I can get it in there and just pop it down. There we go. So that wasn't too bad at all. Very, very easy upgrade, especially thanks to the, uh, the ease of use of the system. So I'm going to grab the monitor, grab a power cable, and make sure that the system will actually boot with this um, wireless card installed. I also have to put the antennas on the back. Um, which I forgot to do. I guess it's easier just to put the card in first anyway and then uh, put the antennas on. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, test it out on camera. 
And of course, things are never as easy as you think they are going to be. Uh, when I tested this card out a couple weeks ago, I used Windows 10, threw the card in, turned the PC on, and Windows 10 grabbed the drivers, installed them, and I was up and running within a couple minutes. Now, it appears with Windows 7 that is not the case. I went ahead, turned the system on, tried to boot up into Windows 7, and got stuck at the Windows starting screen. I turned the system back off. As you can see, I moved the card over to a different PCI slot, thinking, well, that might do something, but it's probably not going to do anything, and to no surprise, it did absolutely nothing. So I went ahead, and uh, I wanted to see what happened if I turned the system on and then put the card in while the system was on, which isn't such a great idea, because you do risk actually shorting something out on the board with this metal bracket when you go to uh, actually install it. So that wasn't the greatest idea, but I didn't have any issues with it. Um, but still, nothing happened. So I thought, well... It probably would be a great idea to actually install the driver since this did come with the driver CD onto the PC uh, and then go from there. And uh, I think at this point it might actually work. I haven't, rebooted, I haven't rebooted the system yet, but it has detected the card. And as you can see, the LED lights on the back of the... Oh my goodness, I can't even get down here. There you go. The LED lights on the back of the card are lit up and blinking. And... Uh, it says we can uh, connect to a network right now, but it also says to restart the system. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the system. Ah, Windows 10 fooled me here. I thought it was going to be that easy, but it was not. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the system, and hopefully we can connect to a network. Yep, the system booted with the network card installed without any problems, and you can see I am now connected to my network, and the date and time's also completely wrong because apparently the CMOS battery has died in the system, so I'm going to have to order a new one of those from Amazon after this video um, because it's going to be annoying to keep uh, having to reset the date and time if the power goes out or something like that. I should really have a battery backup, but I'm too cheap for that. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, as you saw, Windows 10 fooled me, and I just assumed that the operating system would pick up the drivers and do everything for me, uh, and then instead of doing the obvious of actually installing the drivers before I installed the card, you know, I just made that assumption um, and didn't do so. So we are up and running now. I'm going to go ahead and change all the network settings over here, make sure that I can actually reach my website with this wireless card, and then we'll get to setting up that little RAID array. With all of the wireless settings changed back to what they were, the web server is now up and running with this wireless adapter. Now let's go ahead and move on to adding that hard drive. Now this is a pretty small form factor case, and the only place I could find for a 2.5 inch drive was right under the CD-ROM drive in this drive bay right here. But as you can see, this drive bay is not meant to accommodate this 2.5 inch slimline drive. So for the next couple minutes, I'm going to have to find some way to jerry-rig this drive into this drive bay. And it doesn't have to be super stable or anything because, um, once again, this is a server. And once I put it back in the closet, it's just going to sit there and run. Um, but, you know, it's it's going to be a pain to uh, try to get this in here. And I have my box of uh, miscellaneous screws and stuff. Um, and I hope I have some SATA cables in here. Oh, cool, I do. SATA cables right under here. So we're going to use these for um, the upgrade. But yeah, I'll get back to you guys. Hopefully uh, it isn't too hard to jerry-rig that drive into that drive bay. Okay, so I messed around for like 15 minutes with the drive bay and said just screw it. I could not get it to stay in the drive bay. The drive bay also requires some sort of special mounting screws as seen right here on this hard drive um, that I do not have. So as you can see, I took some 3M command strips and just plopped the drive on top of the other hard drive. There is a plastic spacer um, between the two drives, so there is some space uh, in there for air circulation. And then, as far as space goes, this is absolutely perfect because the power supply, the power supply is, it's actually not touching the hard drive. It's resting about, I don't know, one fourth of a millimeter above that Western Digital Blue hard drive right there. And it's actually going to keep it in place just in case those 3M command strips come loose. So that's my solution to mounting the drive in this system. Let's go ahead and boot into Windows and see if we can't get it to uh, uh, get it to become the mirror drive. I popped open Disk Manager with the drive installed and then I realized that there was actually a very, very badly corrupted install of Windows on that other drive. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on with it. So you know what, I think I'm going to take an instance of D-Band, throw it in the system and just nuke uh, that drive and start off fresh. Alright, so I left for a little bit, had a couple other things to do, but now I am back. The disk is wiped. Let's go ahead and set this thing up. 
As you can see, Windows is back up and running and I have disk management opened right now. The first thing I went ahead and did was make disk one a dynamic disk. And I did this because that's what I read online. Uh, apparently you can't turn it into a mirrored volume without it being dynamic. So all you have to do for that is right click on it and just convert it to a dynamic disk. It would be right here where it's to convert to a basic disk because we have already done that. So next, I'm not really sure what to do. I'm pretty sure for disk zero, we can go ahead, right click, add a mirror volume, and then select disk one as our mirror volume. So I'm gonna try that right now on camera and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just reading through, uh, <laughs> I'm just reading through the information. Nothing bad. We'll convert the selected, oh, can you see that? Ah, it's not coming out too well on camera, but it says the operation you selected will convert the selected basic ah, basic disks into dynamic disks. Okay, so it's going to do it for us anyway. Um, so I guess it's going to convert both of the drives. I wasn't sure if I should convert disk zero into a dynamic disk, um, but it's telling us to do that here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, allow it to do that. Now, uh, you will not be able to start installed operating systems from any volume on the disks. Oh, except the current boot volume. Okay, yeah, that it, it should. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. All right. Uh, um, if I do this and the system doesn't boot, I'm going to be incredibly, well, angry. All right. That's really weird. Uh, maybe with Windows 7 mirroring, you can't use two different drives because in RAID, the one time I did use RAID to create a RAID 0 array, I used two different drives to make, um, to make a RAID array. I used a uh, Seagate Barracuda 8GB hard drive and then a uh, Western Digital, I don't know which model it was, but it was a 120GB hard drive. Um, and then I put them together and uh, it took the uh, the specs of the lowest drive. Um, so I mean, I'm not really sure what's going on here. This is kind of weird. I'm, once again, I've never used the Windows 7 disk management option for uh, mirroring a volume. Um, so I'm going to do some more research into this and see if I can't get it to work. Okay, so I went digging around my closet for that 80 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda drive because I just wanted to try it to see what would happen and I found this, the Western Digital Caviar Blue hard drive which I completely forgot about and I did a facepalm because I should just use this from the beginning. Uh, this is a 7200 uh, RPM drive, 320 gigabytes and I think the sector size might actually match the uh, sector size of that Barracuda drive. Um, the drive, the 2.5 inch drive that I put in here I think the sector size is 4K, um, but this should be um, 512 um, since this is an older drive as indicated by the Caviar Blue name. So I'm going to pop this in. Hopefully it works. If not, I might have to scrap this video. Holy cow. That actually worked. And as you can see, it is resyncing right now. So all the data is being transferred over here, uh, copied over to this hard drive. And uh, God, that's... That just made my day, even though it did end up, this this entire project ended up turning into one of those nightmare things. I mean, it's I put a couple hours into this already, um, and if this didn't work, I was going to be highly, highly irritated. Now I just have to find out how I'm going to mount this thing, so I'll worry about that after I go grab something to eat um, while it is uh, resyncing. The drives have just finished syncing and actually took a lot longer than I thought it would. It took about an hour and a half to sync all the data over to this drive. And as you can see, 65 gigabytes on this drive have been left unallocated to accommodate for the fact that the Seagate hard drive uh, has a max capacity of 250 gigabytes. I think that's right. I'm starting to, uh, to lose it here. It's getting late. But anyway, now I have to find a way to mount this drive into the system. And I think I'm actually going to mount it into that drive bay below the CD-ROM drive because this drive should actually fit in there properly. The only issue I'm going to have is finding the proper mounting screws. And for that, I'm going to have to go into my closet and dig out some parts. So two good things have happened since the last clip. I got the hard drive properly mounted into the drive bay right here. As you can see, screws don't fit quite right still, um, but it will hold, so that's fine. And then I also found another 2032 coin cell battery in my eMachine T1090 to put into this PC so I don't have to keep resetting the time and date on this thing. Now it's time to throw the system back together and get it back up and running as the web server.
That's something new, the boot manager is giving me the option to boot from either of those two drives. The server is up and running, and over here, the website is up. So overall, I consider that a very frustrating but successful upgrade. Upgrading to that mirror drive configuration is going to be totally worth it when one day one of those drives decides to kick the can and I have a backup on standby. So that's going to be about it for this installment of AA Computers and Technology. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology. Thanks for watching.